Hey guys, today I have the pleasure of painting Batwoman for you, and I hope you really enjoy it. I really did, just because I love the color scheme and I love the sculpt. It's a very dynamic sculpt for the game, and of course that red really pops from that black. As always, I want to thank my patrons. Without them, these kind of videos and this quantity of them and this quality of them would not be possible. So thank you guys for supporting the channel. If you're interested in the rewards that they get or just supporting the channel, the link is in the description below. Otherwise, I hope you do enjoy the video, so feel free to watch it. And then if you did like it, press that thumbs up button. I always appreciate that. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more miniature board game content. I have several deep dives into some Kickstarters that are launching next week, as well as my July 2019 Kickstarter video, so be on the lookout for that. All right, let's get to it. All right, starting things out with black gray, that's because I've already done a very heavy prime of her in black. So normally I do a pretty light, almost dusting of primer, but if I'm actually trying to use the color, I gotta go a little bit heavy, and you're gonna wanna make sure to do that because normally she's blue and also you don't want that blue showing up. So a very thick coverage of black and then the black gray from Vallejo. Now I'll say once again that the white gray and black gray from Vallejo are highly recommended. I think every painter should have both those colors. They're really, really awesome to do. For the black gray, you can use it as an off black if you don't want to go pure black when painting, or it's a great first highlight in the black gray, especially if you thin it down, you can really blend it. I am purposely not thinning it down as much as I normally would because I'm trying to do this cartoon comic book style highlight system that I'm doing with all these minis. And then white gray is fantastic to actually either paint again, not to go pure white, or you can use white gray and then highlight in white. So white is still your highlight and it gets this nice clean white look instead of uh, dirtying it up with a wash, which happens pretty often if you try and put a wash over white. Now for this, because it's a dynamic sculpt, so you're going to want to get all those curves and poses and her arms out and all that kind of stuff um, highlighted. And again, she's wearing this kind of spandex bodysuit kind of thing. And so there's going to be these big blobs of highlight, kind of like a almost a plastic, if, if you think of like a flexible plastic, reflecting the light back onto you. And obviously we're going to go a little bit heavier um, with this black gray and then get thinner and thinner as we highlight up. Now for the the cape here, I end up uh, painting it a different way and I think it looks fantastic. You probably saw it on the thumbnail, but if not, it's not going to necessarily follow this. I still think you should do some slight highlights anywhere there's a wrinkle like this. It just helps break up the shape uh, a little bit more, but you don't necessarily need to highlight up past this point. I'm going to show you what I did so that you can see both just essentially just how I painted it, all the mistakes and non-mistakes, but uh, you don't need to go past that first one here. So now we have white, but this is not just pure white, obviously. All I've done is add some white to this black gray. In fact, all the highlights are just going to be black gray, black gray, sorry, with more and more white put into it. Which is kind of nice, because then you only need, what, two colors, right? Um, in fact, there's not a whole lot of color use in here. Uh, the, the base takes up, I think, just as much colors as she does. Uh, maybe with her face, uh, maybe it's a bit more, but either way. She's mostly only two colors, and I'm mostly only using two colors with varying degree of white in there, which is kind of nice. And in fact, I'm using black for the black lining anyway, so if you don't prime in black and paint her in black, that's still not an extra color. It's kind of nice. Now, one thing you will be noticing I'm doing is I'm uh, highlighting up her boots a little bit. That's a my bad. Those boots are going to be red, so just disregard that. I try to pretty much edit out me doing that for the most part, but I did do it. And again, I try to be realistic with you guys. I'm not trying to hide you know, make, make me look perfect by any means. I couldn't if I tried anyway. But um, yeah, so this second highlight here, for instance, you don't need to do on the on the outside. I think just that black gray is perfect. He's, again, you're still gonna wanna show the, uh, the kind of ridges in her cape. It's a very cool texture and it catches the light really cool. But uh, we're gonna be doing some uh, more, I don't know what the term is, essentially reflective highlighting as if it's, it's a more uh, reflective material. Okay, so now we have a lot more whiteout. This is my extreme highlight. Again, if you were not doing the comic book, you, you would want to definitely either build up to this or not even quite get this bright. But this will pump up the contrast light. It's not pure white. It is a very light gray. Um, you could probably use something like an ash gray from Army Painter or something like that. Um, maybe even Ministratum gray if you're using the Citadel range. Just something very light gray. Uh, or you can take the black gray and just keep adding white until you get this color. Uh, which I prefer anyway, because I can make it exactly how bright I want, and it's not an extra color. It's kind of nice. 
and, and so a, again you don't need to do this uh, high level of reflectivity here uh, though if you just kept it like this I think this looks fine I think it looks good um, it's just not this it doesn't match the style I'm trying to do and so I'm gonna do that as you can see now I did that off camera, my apologies. I will do the underside of the cape and I'll show you that, so don't worry about that. It looks like my camera was really wanting to focus on what I didn't show you anyway, uh, which is pretty typical in my <laughs> with my luck. But you've seen me do the base a, a, about a million times. I'm going to do the uniform gray, known oil, ash gray, dry brush, and then we're done. That's all the all of the bases on this entire game will be that. That way they all match, they're all realistic and and. and or in uh and how they match and that they kind of be in the same spot so if they're right next to each other they don't like they're in two different places now for her face this is the first kind of thing to break up all of this black i'm using elfic flesh here i used her or i used this uh elfic flesh on the mother for uh um hate if you saw me do that i also used it on nua from celestial so you may have seen me do that uh, if not, this was some great painting jobs that I did. Uh, I'm actually pretty proud of those. Uh, but this this color is really, really good. It's it's kind of like a... It's essentially what I would call pale skin, right? So it's it's like the basic skin tone from... You can see those hints of blue, by the way. I still didn't quite cover enough. Um, it's 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 kind of hard. And that's one of the problems with priming, I guess. Um, anyway, it's like the basic skin tone from Vallejo, but paler. And so that means one of two things. First of all, it's still that same kind of... Caucasian look um, but just paler skin and it also takes a flesh wash still really well because it's it's not white it still has a kind of tan color to it which is which is nice and it's what I just used here um, now I'm just highlighting it back up after the flesh wash and I, I, I will say this is probably the one thing where I'm a bit more realistic than the comics so the comics often will make her white I mean like pure white very stylized comics they'll use that red and black and white uh, to a high degree which is really cool to look at in the comic book pages themselves um, I didn't want to quite go that stylistic in the comic book uh, concept and I wanted her to match the rest of the people as if they were in the same comic or the same world and nobody else is that but I did make her a little bit paler so we did the no oil wash we did the ash gray dry brush just like I said we would just like I do on all of them I'll do it in the next one and I did it in this one um, and, and again it looks really good you get a little bit of those um, straight kind of hash marks so making it go every which way I think really helps kind of sell the, the texture on this all right now we're on pretty much the last color here evil sun's scarlet uh, this is from Citadel I don't use this one too often normally I'll go with a pure red um, from oh uh, what is that that's army painter I believe pure red but Army Painter does not cover very well. It's pretty much the same color. It's very close. Uh, Pure Red is a slightly more orange than Evil Sun Scarlet, in my opinion, how I see it. Um, but Evil Sun Scarlet will cover, as you can see, this is one coat. It's actually still a little bit watered down, and it's covering this black perfectly. It's covering a black great. So if you want that coverage and you want this bright red, I highly suggest the Evil Sun Scarlet from Citadel. Um, I don't like their pots. But their paints certainly do have some use and some purpose, and this level of coverage uh, is something that you're going to be hard to get with such a bright color on black. And uh, and this does it, as you can see, fantastic. Don't even need to do two coats. So very happy with this. This is definitely the color to use if you primed in black. For the hair, again, all of this actually, because you've already highlighted and painted the black, you're just going to want to be careful. And these are very different colors. Now, obviously, the black you use can cover up this red no problem just like the red can cover up the black uh, so you can touch it up however because you've already highlighted it you may then have to add some black gray and that's just, oh that's just no fun uh, I ended up not having to uh, you know touch up anything the sculpt itself is very good it's really nice and so it's really easy to um, not you know your brush can, will tend to follow the sculpt and so as long as the sculpt is good then you're normally pretty good and you're you know taking your time here you can access the belt really nice because the cape is furled up like that I love this sculpt by the way it's a fantastic sculpt it's really really good very dynamic you know kind of mid punch very similar to the Damien Wayne Robin which is also a fantastic sculpt so maybe I'm just partial to that kind of sculpt design I don't know but it's really nice uh, so you're gonna get her gloves again just be careful with the lines but otherwise you're just going to get it fully covered and then you're gonna get her boots 
Uh, her hair is definitely the hardest part, just because of the, the little strands and everything like that. Um, but the, and then with the boots, just when it where it meets the base, you're gonna want to make sure you don't uh, you know get any on the base, obviously, because um, the uh, it'll show up on that ash gray like nobody's business. It'll be <laughs> it'll, it'll 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 look very obvious. So just want to be careful there. So like right here, that's where you want to be careful. But otherwise, you're you're good to go. Now, what I typically do with big stuff like this, you saw me do it on back how and several others, is I do a kind of a tracing outline and then I get my big brush out once I, I uh, get close to the mini where uh, now I'm farther away and then I just go to town with my big brush. That way it paints a lot quicker. I wouldn't want to use that small brush through this whole cape. It, it, you're kind of wasting time. You don't need to do that. Just do it right where you need to, where, the ba where it meets the body so, so you're nice and crisp in your line there you don't get any on her back and then go to town because you're, you're good to go you're not even getting close to the mini so you can just just paint away and it, as you can see it goes really quick this is a, that was like you know live time like that it just goes real quick now we have the black for the black lining she doesn't have a lot of black lining because well, she's mostly mostly black and that's fine that she means it just goes quick so I'm just getting it kind of in the recesses so uh, or, or creases so uh, on her chest on the gloves in between her fingers which I can touch up with the highlight so I'm not too concerned about that um, because again this does cover pretty well. Her belt buckle has a little design in there you want to do and then you want to just kind of black line where the gloves and the boots uh, kind of have that little ridge and then a few creases on both of them and uh, then you're, you're pretty much done. You, I didn't do the rest of the belt pockets because I'm just going to highlight that instead of black lining it. I felt if I black lined it, it it looked too too weird. I guess is is the word. Uh, just because they're so small and there's a lot of detail there, and so and the black lines on there, I think would have detracted from the look I'm trying to give. And then you want to do a few in the hair. Uh, this will help add a lot of depth, especially when combined with the highlights. I'll talk about that when I get there, but it really adds volume to it. It makes it seem like those curls are actual curls, and it, it just adds a lot. And it, you can do little lines like this to kind of signify texture. Now, again, we're going to be highlighting this, but I still want a few black lines here. Um, I'm not going to like even make them necessarily meet or go all the way to the end. A lot of them are just kind of hints at lines, kind of like what you'd see in a comic. So like right there, see, I just just a line kind of in the middle uh, just to give a, a sense of uh, curvature and texture and all that. Now again, I've added white to this red. Now there are two ways to highlight red and it depends on what you do. If you add white, you're going to get more pink or you can add yellow to get more orange or just use an orange or a pink. Um, I, I didn't want to go the orange route. I wanted her to still be very red and I felt that the pink highlights um, would be more subtle than, than the orange highlights. I did an orange kind of highlight on Damien Wayne's uh, uh, red uh, costume. So if you want to see that, you certainly can. This is again a little bit more pink and uh, that's that's fine. It just depends on what you want to do. Uh, you can do either one, uh, but I thought the, the pink was probably the right choice for her. Uh, almost kind of hard to explain why, but um, as you'll see, by the way, I'm not uh, with the these highlights. I'm trying to do kind of actual strokes. Okay, now here you can see the the cape, and really it's just wiggling the 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 brush around, right? Just kind of creating this little jagged jagged edge there, and then you're gonna highlight in the middle. Now because of the cape and the underside, if the light's coming from in front of her, it's gonna like hit just parts of it. And so, and I'll show you even more in the final highlight because I think that's the more important part of this because this can be a little broad. But uh, how it fall on the cape, especially the other end of the cape, is kind of kind of unique. So now we're going to be adding volume, and and again, uh, the final highlight is going to be the key part here. This is fairly, um, I want to say non noticeable. It's it's a pretty good blend. So this is not going to be as drastic as necessarily like the gray on black, which, again, she, like th this portion here is not spandex or anything like that. So it, it makes sense that it wouldn't be some crazy highlight anyway. Uh, but we will go higher. Speaking of higher, here's some more white. So again, I've added even more white there. You can do this to taste. It's one of the reasons I like adding white versus using a color is however much you, however high you want to pump the contrast you can do. Uh, as you can see, it's very much looking pink now, and uh, this is just kind of, I'm really doing the kind of um, 
80% within the 80% highlight kind of thing. I'm not I'm not doing like thin lines or anything like that. I'm definitely making it kind of blobby. But you'll see here just how much that seems to add uh, volume to her hair because because you're getting those highlights on it that just make it seem like it's really fur you know curling up. So here's that kind of middle part of the highlight. Again, I did the same thing with the black um, on top. I just didn't actually record it. Uh, mainly because I wasn't certain if that's what I was going to do or not. I think this turns out fantastic. I really like the look of it. Uh, so I just went ahead and went with it and uh, really, really happy with it. But you'll kind of see how it goes farther down. You're just getting kind of the edges that are poking out. Um, if, you, if the light was coming from the camera right now, that's kind of how the light would kind of go on it. And uh, I, I think as long as you have it make kind of sense, on, I don't pretend to understand how light works. Um, you'd think I, I would because I live in the real world, but I don't. Um, but I think this is how <laughs> light works, and I think it works out pretty good for the mini. It definitely, it, it's good enough to, to give you the illusion of what it is I'm trying to do, which is have these kind of really shiny reflective points on this, you know, furled cape. Now, I, taught, I talked about, uh, again, the coverage of Army Painter, and this is kind of what you can see. So this is Void Shield Blue, this is the second coat. You can see that first coat did crap on the black. You need two, three, four coats to get a solid color. Um, not all Army Painter, like some are worse than others. Um, none of them are as good as some of the best of the other brands, um, but they have a great color selection, and they're cheap, and they flow really nice. So I still like them. And they have their purpose, but for something like this, yeah, you need more coats. This is not like that Evil Sun Scarlet where one coat does it. However, this is the final miniature. Guys, I hope you liked this one. Again, I try to do super high reflectivity. I try to do something different on the cape. I hope you like that style. Let me know in the comments below if you do, if you think this is something I should do with the other capes or not. Again, I'm pretty happy with it myself, but maybe you think it looks terrible or something like that. I, I don't know. I'd love to hear what you have to say about that kind of style. And obviously, if you liked it or just liked the effort that I put into this, uh, you know, I didn't do a quick job on this. I spent my time and painted her uh, as, as, as good as I could in this style. Go ahead and press that thumbs up button, like the video. That certainly helps a lot. As always, again, subscribe if you want to see more miniature board game content. Uh, my next painting will be the Joan of Arc Legendary Dragon. I did finish it. My patrons have already seen small pictures of it. It looks fantastic, and I can't wait to share it with you guys. Otherwise, I'm going to have some Kickstarter-specific videos over Super Fantasy Brawl and Madara, and I'm also going to be doing a July 2019 Kickstarter video, so be on the lookout for that. If you want to see those, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell icon so you actually are notified when I post it. Otherwise, the subscription doesn't really do a whole lot, and YouTube probably won't show you the video. Alright guys, thanks so much. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll talk to you soon.